Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good evening. You're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. We'll start with the headlines. Love to the country and loyalty to the Sultan is the theme of a poetic evening hosted by the Omani Women's Association in Muscat. Fifteen countries discuss in Muscat a memorandum of understanding of the Indian Ocean to inspect and monitor ships. And heavy fighting between the Syrian army and the Nusra rebels erupts on the Golan Heights. Those are the headlines and now for the news in details. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Turong Tan Sung of Vietnam on his country's national day. A poetic evening on love to the country and loyalty to the Sultan was held by a number of poets at the Omani Women's Association in Muscat, patronized by His Highness Sayyid Mohammed bin Salim Al Saeed, head of protocols in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The poets expressed their sincere feelings of patriotism and showcased achievements of the Blessed Renaissance. Ten Omani poets from different regions of the Sultanate took part in the evening. With the participation of 15 countries, in addition to a number of specialists in the Director General of Maritime Affairs, the 17th meeting of the Indian Ocean's Memorandum of Understanding started today. The meeting discussed updates issues in the field of inspection and, mar and marine environment protection against pollution. It also discussed issuing certificates and licenses for sea workers, investigating ma marine accidents and work on board of ships, in addition to international and national maritime laws and regulations. The seventh meeting of the Municipal Council of the Governorate of Dufar reviewed today the developments of residential schemes in the Wilaya of Salada, Haluf and Msehila. It also discussed practicing commercial activities at Thamrait Road in the Wilaya of Thamrait and holding the second festival of Sarb Valkot 2014. The meeting also discussed a number of topics related to the Governorate of Dufar and Municipal Affairs Committee of the Wilaya's recommendations in addition to enhancing the Municipal Council's role in the Governorate of Dufar besides activating all means of cooperation and coordination between the Council and various governmental bodies in the Governorate to serve the public interest. It was chaired by His Excellency Sheikh Salim bin Ufayt al-Shamfari, Chairman of the Far Municipality and Chairman of the Municipal Council in the Governorate. The Directorate of Sport Affairs in the Governorate of South Batna celebrated the conclusion of events and activities of the Youth Programme 2014 at the Theatre at the Rustaq College for Applied Sciences. The activities and events of this year focused on developing youth talents and consolidation of the traditional heritage. The ceremony included inshad presented by the participants, followed by visual shows about implemented activities within the programme in the wilayas of the Governorates, besides poetry competition. And still to come in our news bulletin. The season for shrimp fishing starts in the Sultanate. من هنا تبدأ أسطر الحكاية. تقاليدها راسخة كالجبال أصالتها مضرب مثل في كل مكان بساطتها ليس لا مثيل لا حدود لكرمها حاضرها مشرق متجدد مهرجان الصلالة السياحي 2014 من الثلاثين من يوليو إلى السادس من سبتمبر
Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. Heavy fighting between the Syrian army and the Nusra rebels erupted today on the Golan Heights, where the militants have wrestled control of a key frontier crossing which had been operated by the United Nations. It was not clear whether the Syrian forces had managed to retake control of the Quintera crossing from the rebels of the Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front. At least one tank belonging to the Syrian army was also involved, and some rebels could be seen a few meters away from the frontier fence. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which says it gathers information from all sides in the conflict, said there were confirmed casualties on both sides. A contingent of 44 UN peacekeepers from Fiji was detained on the Syrian side of the Golan uh, by militants on Thursday. The head of the Fijian army said yesterday negotiations for their release were underway. More than 70 Philippine troops trapped by militants in a different area on the Syrian side of the frontier have been moved to safety. Iraqi and Kurdish forces regained control of Suleiman Beik village, the main stronghold of the armed militant groups, which seized it 11 weeks ago. The joint forces also regained control of Nginka village, situated within Salah din province, to the northeast of Baghdad. Kurdish Peshmerga forces also retook full control of the town of Zumar in northern Iraq from Daesh militants. Zumar is located near an oil field. Still in Iraq, the U.S. Army continued to drop humanitarian supply in the village of Amrili, 160 kilometers to the north of Baghdad. U.S. Defense Ministry spokesman said dropping of supplies came at the request of the Iraqi government, mentioning that Australian, French and British airplanes took part in dropping food supplies described as essential. The U.S. spokesman said that dropping supplies was accompanied by coordinated shelling of nearby areas targeted militants belonging to Daesh. In Yemen, Houthi groups continued their crowding in the capital Sana'a and its entrances after a Houthi tribal leader urged supporters to wage a campaign of civil disobedience until their demands are met, in spite of political good offices aimed to contain the situation. Crowds sprang out from centers of Sana'a to the main streets, cutting many roads and paralyzing movement in the city. On its part, the Yemeni government dispatched large numbers of military personnel and security forces on the streets of Sana'a. This came after Presidential Mediation Committee had failed to reach to a solution to the crisis of forming a national unity government and review of decisions hiking fuel prices. Ukraine's military said today it had pulled its forces back from defending a vital airport in the east against Russian tanks. The withdrawal from the civilian airport outside the city of Luhansk was the latest in a string of reverses for Ukrainian forces fighting pro-Russian separatists. Ukrainian forces had destroyed seven Russian tanks near the airport and had identified a major buildup of Russian forces to the north and south of Luhansk to the rear of Ukrainian lines. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has called on the participants to push for a ceasefire between Ukrainian governments and troops and separatist forces. Speaking to students at Moscow State Institute of International Relations, Lavrov said the priority of the talks should be reaching an agreement on an immediate unconditional ceasefire. He also said that there will be no military intervention as Russia calls for only peaceful resolution of the crisis in Ukraine. He urged the West to ask Kiev to stop shedding of its own population and sit down for talks with the pro-Russian insurgency. Clashes between Pakistani anti-government protesters and police resumed in the capital Islamabad this afternoon with security forces firing tear gas to stop demonstrators trying to reach Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's residence. Live television footage showed men armed with wooden clubs running chaotically along the central Constitution Avenue, some pressing cotton scarves to their faces to lessen the effect of the tear gas. Muscat Securities Markets General Index today lost 11.22 points to close at almost 7,356 points. The trading value stood at 5.44 million Omani Reals compared to the last session, which stood at 6.67 million Reals. The report released by MSM pointed out that the market value fell by 0.11% to reach about 15.39 billion Omani Reals. The value of shares brought, sorry, bought by non-Omani investors reached 2.34 million Reals and the value of shares sold by non-Omani investors reached 1.97 million Reals.
The season for shrimp fishing on the coast of the Sultanate started and runs to the end of November as a large number of fishermen head into the sea in Al Wusta and South Al Sharqiya governorates and a number of wilayats in Dhufar governorate to fish shrimps. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries Wealth has completed its preparations for this season, including the administrative and technical procedures, guidance, awareness, regulatory, and statistical efforts related to work during the shrimp's fishing season for the sustainability of this wealth and optimizing exploitation of the season. Research centers of the ministry have conducted numerous scientific studies and research projects about the shrimps in order to increase production. On the international level, shrimps are considered the most popular seafood in terms of containing low calories and fat, and it proves to be a healthy alternative for meat. It's also useful in fighting Alzheimer's, cancers, hypertension, depression, and helps regulating heart pulses. And now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear sky, sorry, cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the governorate of Dhufar and nearby mountains with chances of intermittent drizzle. The rest of the Sultanate will have clear to partly cloudy skies with chances of scattered rains over parts of the Hajar Mountains. Winds will be southerly to southwesterly light to moderate along the coast of the Arabian Sea, while it will be southerly to southeasterly light to moderate over the rest of the Sultanate. Seas along the coasts of the areas of the Arabian Sea will be moderate with a maximum wave height of 2 meters and along the rest of the coast it will be slight to moderate to the maximum wave height of 1.5 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Love to the country and loyalty to the Sultan is the theme of a poetic evening hosted by the Omani Women's Association in Muscat. Fifteen countries discuss in Muscat a memorandum of understanding of the Indian Ocean to inspect and monitor ships. And heavy fighting between the Syrian army and the Nusra rebels erupts on the Golan Heights. With that, we come to an end to tonight's news bulletin from all of us here at the newsroom and the studios. Good night. <laughs>